Hi, I'm Rob Hall. I'm Daniel Yackel. And we're going to show you how to build a JTM45 Plus. The JTM45 was Marshall's answer to Fender's 410 basement. Before we get started building, a safety review. All tube amplifiers contain lethal voltages, often several hundred volts, which will leave burnt entrance and exit wounds in skin. In addition to burnt skin, these voltages can also cause permanent physical damage and death. Not only are these voltages present when the amp is turned on, but also for some time after the amp has been turned off, we want to stress that every piece of electronic equipment must be treated with respect. As with any construction project, there are certain tools and supplies that are recommended to complete the project. Please refer to the assembly manual for our recommended list of tools and supplies. To build this kit, the first thing we do is take the cabinet, cut holes for the chassis. I'll take some tape and put it right next to the feet. Can't go without saying, it's goggle time. Now we're going to drill our holes with a 5 16 inch drill bit. We're going to work on the chassis. We're going to drill the holes out for the captive nuts. Now we're going to change from the 5 16 inch drill bit to the 1 8 inch drill bit. We're going to drill some additional holes in the side of the chassis in which to mount the caps. We've already laid out the holes. We want to center punch the point before we drill. Before we install the captive nuts, we're going to deburr our holes we drilled earlier. Using a larger drill bit makes deburring easier. Now we'll install the captive nuts with a hammer. Now it's time to remove the plastic. So the screws will fit flush on the tube shields, we're going to flatten the edges. Before we install the solder terminals, we'll need to bend them at a 45 degree angle. Well, think about when Marshall was putting these together and Fender and other kind of ant manufacturers, they had these people that would, this is what they would do all day long. I know they had to start off pretty slow at first, but uh, as they got good, they would just, they knew everything. They could build the entire thing in their sleep. Now these covers can be left off of the, off the tube sockets if, if someone desires. It makes for a very clean look when all the tube sockets are, and the covers are installed. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to wire the filaments. To do that, first thing we got to do is we got to twist two wires together. And I have my two wires here. And y'all have seen this before, where I'm going to chuck the wire. And I know that I need three and a half feet of length to generate a three foot length of twisted wire. So I'm going to hand this to, to Daniel. And he's going to give me tape measure. He's going to pull it back three and a half feet. And then with a pair of pliers with some tape, if you can see this, it's got tape on the jaws to protect the wire. He's going to hold it. Now this wire is going to twist, after I hit the drill, it's going to twist to that spot and stop. And it's going to come out with about three feet, which is perfect for our filaments. And we twist it a while until it looks pretty good. And you can imagine doing this by hand would take a very long time. And it doesn't come out near as pretty. Okay. So once we're done that, unchuck it. Now what we have here is a wire that's going to be our filament. This is the hardest part, in my opinion, this is the hardest part of building amplifiers, making the filament wires lay down on the chassis, especially for Marshall style builds. On this tube socket where I've got it installed, I'm not going to put solder on both, both holes. I'm only going to put solder in this one hole right here. And that's because we're going to fill in the other one with the next wire. All right, so now that we've gone through and we wired the filament, we want to add a couple of components to the power tube sockets as well as the pre tube sockets. So let's go through that right now. That's a 5.6 cam resistor. I'm going to leave that open for the wire that's going to be in there later on. This next one, this is the 1 ohm resistor. This is, we're putting this in the circuit um, so that um, we would be able to test the bias. We can bias this amp properly. It's a lot easier if you have the components already in place. A lot of amps actually in include it in their design. Now I normally do if I want to add a little insulation to something, I'll take some wire, like I've got a piece right here, and I want to cut off some of the, I'm going to strip it back. And what I have what, what I have here is the insulation that came off of the off of the wire. I'll feed that 
onto the leg of the component. There we go. Put the output transformer right to there. Now that we've got the filaments wired and our transformers installed and all the tube sockets, now we're going to put on the face plates and all the controls. We got our we got our chassis right here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our our input connector and we're going to install it like this into the chassis. Now I wanted to use a, mu a much more durable impedance selector, so I used this really big one. Uh, but the only problem is this one doesn't fit in the hole. We're going to modify this hole a little bit to where it'll fit one of two ways. You can do it with a large ream, or you can do it with a 13 32nd drill bit, which is right here, when we, we go into the hole and make it, make it larger. I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna use the ream, actually. That way I can get a nice round hole. Just real well. So I'm gonna drill this out as well. And this one I'm gonna use the drill. i hold it very steady. And that's at 13 32nd drill bit. There it is, it's perfect. All right, you'll notice the back plate right here fits right here. There's this wide blank area which will pull off of the chassis so it needs to be connected. Uh, we tape it on there with some double stick tape. You should have double stick tape on the back of your back panel. Uh, if not you can get some from a, a local hardware store. Get the thinnest stuff you can. Once you've got that going we're going to pull off that backing. And Once we put it on here it is there. Line up my holes and it's on. Fuse holder. Okay, a little rubber washer goes on first. This is to keep moisture out of the amp. So we'll put it in. I'm going to mount it so that the controls, that the uh, two tips are pointed up. And it's a real simple just a nut on the back side of it. That one's for the mains. This is for the this fuse is for the high voltage, the impedance selector. I'm going to install it with these two contacts right here pointing up. Next I'm going to put in the speaker jacks. I'm going to remove one of the washers and I'm going to set it to the side because we're not going to use it. Insert it in the hole. For the speaker jacks I've gotten the, I'm mounting the contacts facing up. It's pretty, pretty important again so you can so be able to solder to them well. I want to put the fuses in right now, and the reason is, uh, is because the fuse, the fuse holders, the fuse caps, they're under, they're, they're spring loaded, and so when the fuses are in them, they'll stay in the fuse holders. Otherwise, they'll fall out of the fuse holders. So that's that. Everything is mounted correctly. That's how the back panel should look. You just pull the plastic off. First thing I do is I put one of the jacks on. Again, I'm going to put one of the, the washers to the side. Okay, here's the on-off switch. I'm going to remove, I'm going to remove that round nut and the hex nut. I'm going to put the round nut on first. I'm going to, I'm going to go about four or five threads from the end. Then I'm going to take the lock washer, that large one, the real big ones. I'm going to put it over that, over that control switch put it in the amp for the number one number two the the, the high sensitivity ones I'm going to put a lock washer on the on the jack so I took both the washers off I have my grounding washer right here I'm going to snap it in place I'm going to assemble that in the unit what I've found is is that uh, this helps keep out the RF energy as it comes into the amp once it gets into the amp it will. Um, you don't. You don't want to hear AM stations on your on your amp. All right. You'll <laughs> notice that this. I've left this hole right here empty. That's where I'm going to put my master volume. I'm going to come over here. Take my tab right here. I'm going to break it off. It just breaks right off. And I'm going to take one of these flat washers, and I'm going to mount this in that hole right there. I've got the right now. I've got the the um, terminals pointing up this direction so that I can solder to it when I get when I when I finally do the installation. I'll turn it sideways and get those terminals out of the way. But right now they're going to be up. And do, do refer to your manual to make sure you put the components where they're supposed to be, what values go where. And on, I'll switch. All right. We're going to put, on, we're going to put the indicator in, indicator light in. 
it's 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 going to be two components. It's going to be the the light, and it's going to be the lock washer. Once you install that into the faceplate, you can take the ends of the wire and you slide the lock washer onto it. All the way down. I'll twist this up. I've taken a normal pair of pliers and I put in some black electrical tape at the end. And what the black electrical tape will do is it will protect the plastic from getting damaged. All right, this is, you can build the amp like it is right now, um, but I like to do a little modification. I like to put this switch right here in this spot right here, and this will adjust the feedback. I'm gonna put this switch over here for selecting between your solid state or tube rectifier. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna drill those quarter inch holes. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm a big proponent of a center punch. This way my, my drill bit is less likely to to skate. For anybody who's building amps, you can build a few of these, by all means, these little deburring tools are great. The only thing you'll use off of these switches is the switch and the nut. Lock washer takes up too much space and it won't fit through the plexiglass faceplate. All right, notice it's three positions, center position's off. And the next one, right here. The excess wire from the bottom of this switch, you're going to run it over to your rectifier tube. All right. And so then the high voltage from this is going to this switch here on top. The rectifier voltage or wire for terminal volt wires are going over the rectifier tube over here. You've got your filament wires going to your rectifier tube right here as well. You've already got these wired up. And we're going to put on a couple of diodes here as, wire, as well as wire up this switch right here. This switch is the tube rectifier, solid state rectifier select switch. And when we get all that wired up, then we'll install the, the fuse holder in there. All right, so they're all going to come. They're going to come around to actually between pin four and pin one and pin six and pin one. You'll notice that a lot of this <clears throat> on this design that I did, I've only got I've only got it with one wire in the socket on the on the on the switch. And the reason being, if you put more than one wire, you can't squeeze more than one wire in the terminals. They're just too small. Now we're going to put the bus wire across our across our connections. I want to show you a couple of things that are important on here. One of these is the bus wire that goes from each one of the pots. Uh, this is really to hold the pots in place in case they loosen up so they don't spin. Uh, to make this bus wire stick on the back of these pots, you'll have to scrape the back of the pots a little bit just so that the solder will, will adhere. This is the most critical area probably for noise in the Marshall style amplifiers. Uh, if you've got a Marshall and you want to reduce some of that input noise, this is a great way of doing it. The, just put some shielded cable between the front jacks and the tube. Great, so when we have, the, we have our shielded cable, we want to stretch it out about this far. This is where you want to pull back your shield, you want to pull back your center conductor. I want to leave the conductor about an inch, uh, a little over an inch long, and I'm going to strip back about an eighth of an inch. You want to put the ground as close as you can up to the insulation. You want to leave about an eighth of an inch so it doesn't melt back. And on this one, we're going to actually cut all the ground, all the shield wire off. Here's our turret board. We're about to start installing the components. Once the components are installed, the board will look like this. Now we're going to install the chassis in the cabinet. So now it's finished. Yeah. Who plays it first? <laughs>